Welcome to Unit 6. It's our last one. There's just one small section at the end that's a singleton, but other than that, we are going to wrap it up discussing some stuff with circles. Lots of you'd think there, what's up with circles? It's round, it's got a radius that's r, its area is pi r squared, all that stuff, but there's a lot more to it than that. This is honestly one of the sections that I find when I work with uh, um, kids in the upper levels of math that they forget these and they pop up on the ACT and really causes their geometry subscore to suffer because there's so much stuff about the arcs and the angles. I'm going to give you the basics of it because uh, a lot of times if you get into the real details it kind of makes the basics murky. So we're going to kind of keep it um, as simple as possible, yet still giving you enough info so you can succeed on those standardized tests. So up first, we're going to talk about arcs and angles. So I'd like you to draw a circle right here. I'm going to draw mine a little bigger, actually, even. So let's go like this. Wow, that's one of the better freehand circles I've ever drawn, I'm not going to lie. Let's put a center on here and let's call it P. What I'm going to do is chop out a chunk. So I'm going to cut out a little wedge and there's a couple things we're going to discuss on here. We're going to discuss this arc right here and the notation for it. If you want me to reference that arc and the one the shortest distance between these two which we if it's less than 180 degrees we call that a minor arc and we note it by putting this arc over the top of it all right so that means look at arc a b if i put a third point over here and call it c that's what i need if i want you to go the long way around there and reference what we call the major arc one that's over 180 degrees. Then I would need to call that arc A. And so just so I know you're supposed to take the long way, I have to give a third variable for you. So the blue one we call a minor arc, the yellow one we call a major arc, which you won't be asked to find, but it's good to know that anyway. And then we have a little angle created in here, angle APB or angle BPA. I'm going to put its degree measure in here as x degrees. Now you'll notice that around here is 360 degrees. When we talk about the measure of the arc, you might say its length we denote with how long this is. Like if I were to cut this out and lay it down flat on a ruler, how long is that? And maybe, I don't know, it looks like it's about 8 inches long. That's its length. If I want to know its measure, I'm really talking about how many degrees of the entire circle it takes up. And we always think of a circle as having 360 degrees, whether we're talking about the angles in here or the arc length around the whole thing. The measure, let's draw this. And this is a minor arc. This one was a major arc, less than 180, more than 180. And if I wanted to give you, notation for the measure of arc AB, that would be how many the degrees of the circle it gets cut off. And that's going to be the same as the angle inside of here. So another little bit of vocabulary, that angle in there, just giving you some vocab here, angle A, P, B is called a central angle because it hits in there at the center and the relationship between the uh, central angle and the arc it cuts off and let's go make sure you're visually seeing that the central angle and the arc that it cuts off is that if this is an x degree angle we say this is an x degree arc central angle measures are equal to the measure of the intercepted arc. So sometimes numbers are better. So let's suppose that this angle right here, I don't know, it looks like it's about, let's say, 50 degrees. 
What that means is the measure of this arc is also 50 degrees. The measure of the angles equal the measure of their central arc. So this says name the arc made by the given angle F, Q, E. And this would be called its intercepted arc. And to name it, I could call it arc FE. Or I could call it arc EF. Without a third letter, it means the shortest distance. The third letter, if I said arc FDE, that would take me along the, and give me the major arc or the rest of the circle. The minor plus the major has to equal 360 degrees, by the way. All right, and let's suppose this was um, 97 degrees. Well, then so is the measure of this arc because central angles in measure equal the measure of the arc they cut off. So now it says name the central angle of the given arc ML. The central angle in there is angle 1. Nice and easy. And again, their measures are equal. So if this is a 100 degree angle, this we say is 100 degrees as well. Easy. Next page. Now we're going to work with finding the measures of some of these angles. So remember the central angle's measure is equal to the arc. So take a look. This is 155 degrees, so so is this one in here, but that's not where question mark is. This is 120 degrees, so so is this one in here, and that's where the question mark is. So question mark is equal to 120 degrees. What if this had been a Y? How could I figure out um, that measure, the measure of angle Y? Well, then I know that all the way around is 360, so I could do 360 and subtract these off. That would give me this angle measure and that arc measure. So keep in mind, all the way around is 360, and central angles equal the measure of the arcs they cut off. Solve for x. There's several ways I can do this. Um, probably the easiest thing to do is note that they've given me 140 degrees in here. And I know that linear pairs, angles that together make a line, have to add up to 180. So I know that this angle in here has to complete the 180 degrees or be 40 degrees. And I've said that the central angle is equal to the arc that it cuts off. So that's probably the easiest way to do this one. Add 8 to both sides to isolate x, and I get 48 is equal to 6x. Dividing both sides by 6 gives me an x of 8. There's other ways to do this, by the way. As long as you don't break any of the laws, um, you could have said, well, this one next door, or this over here is 140, and these are vertical, so this is 140. These make half a circle, so this is 40, so this is 40, so this is 40. I mean, you could walk away around that all you want, but the easiest thing was to go in and hone in right on this angle that's creating that arc, and I could see that its measure is 40, so I set them equal. Now we're going to talk about arcs and chords. So in here, I've got to give you a little, I should have put a concept box on here. I'm going to throw one on here. One of the theorems for circles says that when you have a chord, and a chord hits two points on the circle, it can go through the center, but it need not. Every diameter is a chord. A radius is not. It has to hit two points and go completely inside of the circle. And while I'm giving this vocabulary, why not here? Let's do that. That's called a chord. I'm going to go like this. This is actually called a tangent when you hit just one point outside the circle. And then one that's outside and hits both but doesn't stay inside like a chord, this is called a secant line. This is called a tangent line. And that'll be for future reference. But right now, we're just going to deal with that chord, AB. It's a line segment, right? So this is chord AB. If I wanted to give proper notation, I go like this. What's true about that is when you draw the radius that hits perpendicularly to every chord, so let's go try to draw that nicely. It, and I'm going to put a little perpendicular there. Every radii drawn perpendicular to a chord bisects it or cuts it into two equal pieces. So numerically, if that was 7, so is the other part of the chord. So a radius 
drawn perpendicular to a chord bisects it. So we're going to use the right triangle stuff and the fact that we know that um, Pythagorean theorem holds in a right triangle and this in conjunction and all together. So I'm being asked for x. Here's what I know. I have a chord. I have a radius drawn perpendicular to the chord. I didn't complete the radius, but it doesn't matter. I'm drawing a segment perpendicular to the chord. I just told you that that bisects the chord. So this one's nice and easy, x is 6. This one's much more difficult, and I'm going to do a build up to that one. Honestly, you wouldn't have to do one this hard, so maybe I'll just talk about it but not do it. I want to give you one that was on the actual final for this second semester. So those of you who already took second semester, you took a final that had a problem like this on it. It had a chord and the, I'm going to make this look a little bit more to scale, so give me a moment here. I'm going to draw this over here. It had a chord and it had a segment or a radius that started to be drawn. It's not a radius, it'd have to go hit on the circle, but it's like I'm trying to draw one. And it's perpendicular to the chord. This piece was given over here. This piece was given over here, but the one that was asked for was over here. So we're trying to figure out what would be the length of x. Well, let's go use this theorem and something we did at the beginning of the notes for section boy two, I think, unit two. Anyway, when I draw this perpendicular to the chord, it bisects it or cuts it into two equal pieces. Now, this right here is a radius of the circle. I don't know what it is, but I'm in a right triangle and I know both the legs. So I'd say leg squared plus leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared, Pythagorean theorem. And I get 64 plus 36 is equal to x squared. And I'd get 100 is equal to x squared. To undo the squaring, I square root both sides. The square root of x squared is technically the absolute value of x, but for our purposes, there we go. And I get x of 10. Now, this one's really tricky. If you don't understand this one, that's fine. And I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I'm going to give you the approach for it. How could I approach this? Well, I've got this chord that was cut by this radius at a right angle. So what that allows me to do is use this fact over here that this would also have to be 15. Unfortunately, that's not what I'm trying to find. I'm trying to get x. Well, how could I do that? And again, it's kind of like a puzzle. How am I going to get that? Why do they tell me this is 16.7? There's got to be a reason. What that means is all radii in a circle are the same. I mean, it's like the spokes on a bike wheel. Every spoke is the same length. or You're not going to have a perfectly round bike wheel. So if that's 16.7, I know this is. So I'll... How am I going to get in there and get x? Well, if those are 16.7, so is this one, right? So go point at that. Now I'm in a right triangle right here. Right here's a right triangle. And I know two pieces on it. I know the 15 here and the 16.7 here. So I could use the Pythagorean theorem to find this missing piece. I'm not going to do that. But if you understand this, that's kind of cool. Um, let me know if you do. I'd be very proud of you. And then that's also a radius. So if I can get question mark with the Pythagorean theorem, I can do 16.7 minus it to get x. But that's a little bit beyond the scope of difficulty that we need to be able to do. And I believe, am I at a stop sign here? I think I'm getting close. I think that might be it for this video. Yep, stop and do worksheet 6.1 and 6.2. Have a good one.